What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Salon Centric Education slash Q and A Cribs Edition. <laughs> Today, uh, my name is Philip Wolf, and we are in my guest bathroom today because that's how we're going to do it. Uh, hope everyone's you know doing well and uh, you know hanging in there through these times. Uh, but today I thought we would bring some education for you guys. So if you have any questions or anything, please, um, I have Danny Tiger helping me out here. I have quite a few mannequins to choose from. I can do some questions and answers for you guys, and I can do some live techniques for you if you like. So, uh, and like I said, I've got some long hair and this, and I also thought that I would do I would demo some techniques on dry hair because, you know, uh, from what I've been uh, gathering information-wise, I've heard that, um, you know, when we do get back to work, and I know some of us have, uh, depending on what state you're in, but uh, the majority of us have not, but when we do go back, there will be some restrictions, right? There'll be some restrictions, there'll be some limitations on how many clients can be at the salon at the same time, how much time we can spend on each client, yada, yada. And I believe, you know, there's some rumors out there of, you know, no blow drying this and that. But I would say it's more of a time constraint, right? So I think to remedy that, uh, maybe you would have your clients come in, if they're not getting color, that is, to come in with clean, dry hair. And that way, you can do some hair cutting that way. Now, I understand not all haircuts can be uh, executed this way, but I figured I'd show a few uh, dry cutting techniques. Are there any requests though before I begin? Everyone's just saying hello from oh, okay. all over the nation. Oh really? 250 followers. Okay, cool, all right. Hello everyone, this is so awesome by the way. How crazy is this, right? In, in, in everybody's house doing this stuff. Okay, so let, actually let me just show you a few things here. This was from a live I did not too long ago. And no, this is not just a haircut that I did. This was actually cho- oh, don't mind the color, by the way. This was just an old mannequin I had in the closet, you know? But this was actually the result of a ton of a poll done on Instagram on my stories where I asked what kind of techniques would you like to see, and I added all those techniques and created one haircut, So, which was really cool. I did, someone wanted to see some scissor over comb, so I did some scissor over comb here, as you can see. Someone wanted to see a mohawk, so this kind of gave it sort of a, a mohawkish type of feel. Someone wanted to see undercut, again, undercut. Someone wanted to see more of a pixie, but a longer version pixie. Um, and then a swoop fringe, so we did a, a, a longer swoop fringe here. And then someone wanted to see where they could see some shaggy texture. Now, let me explain this one here. You see how short that is right there? But wait a minute, we got a long, long hair here. Well, how is that possible, right? It's not just bringing out square. I actually did a um, block graduation. So let me show you this real quick. So I went ahead and sectioned the top off like this at the round. And what I did was I just grabbed this whole thing and I elevate, well, not that part, mm -hmm. but I elevated it all the way up like so. As you can see like this, so from the side, it looked like this, and just make sure that, you know, you look in the mirror, make sure it's straight up, and I, I uh, just cut it straight across, and then when you drop that, the cool thing is, is it gets, you get a very collapsed feel, but you, you get to keep a lot of length around here while having it short in there. The cool thing is, it keeps the shape lean on the face, right, so you have a, a lot of weight taken away, but a lot of fun too. But then you get to keep your shaggy, shaggy perimeter there. And then this sort of just blended into a almost mullety back. You know what I mean? Not, not quite full mullet. But how did I do this? I just did this where, regardless of the head shape, very, very square. So as you can see, right towards the occipital, it's at its shortest. It's longer through here, and then again, a little bit longer through there. You have some questions. Sure. Martine says that he would like to see scissor over comb and face framing, and also Marlon wants to see scissor over comb. But Martin asks, what dry cutting shears do you use? Okay, so for dry cutting, there's two of them, but number one, I mean, come on guys, shameless plug, but the wolf shear, of course, right? 
uh, my signature series, literally, because I got my signature there. And mind you, my signature is not even that nice. It, uh, it was uh, done by a computer, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, I use these. These are my seven inch versions. It comes in six, six and a half and seven. And then I have another one by this same uh, collaboration brand called Zen Master, and they have one that is specifically for dry cutting. So if you want to know where to get these, you can just Google wolf shear, and literally it'll, it'll come up as one of the first, if not the first, um, and then you can go there. So I prefer longer shears, especially when scissor over combing, so it's a good thing you asked that. So what we will do, oh, and face framing, we'll get into that too. But let's go ahead and start. And you know what? I'm going to grab a fresh mannequin here. All right. This one here, I believe is Ellie. Or is this Josephine? No, it's Ellie. Okay, so Ellie is here today with us. And you know what we're going to do is we're going to start on the left side here, okay? So let me section this off. Now, I like to use a guide with my fingers when creating a, a line. So you see how I push with my thumb here? And then, whoop, look at when I release, a nice clean section, okay? So let me use a... Uh, Oh gosh. Okay. Let me use a clip and clip this away. And you know what, just for simple purposes, I'm going to just square this off in the back. Uh, but you could choose to do a rounded uh, you know, section. It's all up to you, really. But just, just so you know. Okay, so here we go. Let me just get rid of that, too. Also, Ursula wants to know what is the difference between dry cutting and what? Cutting oh, scissors. Great. Oh, great question. So, most of the time, dry cut shears uh, and wet cut shears, normally uh, you're going to get a pair that's both. I don't know that there's a, a pair specifically only for wet, but I do know for some dry cut shears, um, the way the blades are positioned, uh, sometimes they are, it's called a propeller blade. And what that means is the blades, when they're like this, start to slightly curve out this way and curve out that way. Now, what would that do? That would actually slightly push hair. Now, back in the day, people would say, oh, if the shears push hair, they're no good. Well, that's not true. Some are actually designed to do that because that way, when you have the dry hair, especially thick, coarse hair, when you're slicing through or cutting through on dry hair, it slightly pushes so that you will get a soft line. So, it, it'll, it'll get, you'll get a strong line, but it'll be slightly pushed, and it also is going out towards, because this is how you cut, you don't cut inwards, you know? So you're cutting out, and that way you don't snag hair or anything like that. So that's what helps out a lot. And generally, they're gonna be a little bit on the shorter side compared to a set. So hopefully that answers that. Um, okay, so, scissor over comb. Check this out, guys. Most times you're probably not gonna start with this much hair, so let me go ahead and make it easier on myself and grab a small ponytail. Let's just go ahead and cut this. Are you ready? Ooh! Ho, ho, ho. And that's it. So, I'm just kidding. So, here we go. Here is the thing. You have a choice now. If you want to just get rid of bulk, I like to use the side with not a lot of tension. So, what I would do is just you know, cut all this out just to get the bulk out of there. Now, when I want to go more precision, I'm going to go to the side with a little bit more tension here. Now, here's the thing. Watch this. What you want to do is you want to, you know, grab the comb comfortably here where you can slightly scoop up. So what you don't want to do is do this where the, the tip of the teeth of the comb are in the scalp because that's going to create a queer. And you don't need to do it too much either. All you need to do is go straight up with a little bit of a bevel here. You see that? Now what you want to do is you see this edge here? That edge, you're going to see the hair go. What you want to do is use the bottom portion of the blade to follow parallel with that edge, and your top blade is going to cut. So as you go up, so does your scissor, and that's that. So essentially, you're making a manual clipper. So your clipper is like this and that and then you're just cutting. So here we go. We're gonna start off and get into it. Here we go, wait, let me get this fringe out of the way. Stand up. All right, and here we go. 
So you see that line? So I'm going to create one line first, and then I'm going to slowly follow up that line. See, I'm, I'm going to go fairly slow so that you can see. Okay? And see, at the round of the head, it's very important. If I go too far in, I'm going to round off too much, and I may so good. not create... You know, you want to create a somewhat of a weight line here at first because you can always take away more hair, but once it's gone, you can't really put it back on. Then here, I call this the, uh, the C curvature. Why? Because this is where the low recession and the sideburn hit, and this is generally where the cheekbone shows. And this is great on men or women. I like to carve this out a little bit. So we're going to use the tips of the shears here and just slightly open this up. This is a small detail that really opens up the face and, you know, aesthetically gives a nice little detail to, to the look, you know? So there's that. And then, of course, I have around the ear as well. Now, of course, you can use trimmers, you know, which would probably be better. But if you're a, a purist and you're a scissor-only type person, then you can easily just use the tips of the shears to create... Uh, some clean cleanliness around the ear, okay? Now, ooh, here's a tricky area right there, right? So how do we do that? We're gonna go at an angle here and go like that. Did you see that move? I'll do it one more time. So we're gonna go behind the ear here and scoop that out a little bit. And now we're going at a 45. See, I'm not even moving anything, just, just the scissor. And then I will slightly start to move upward and outward, okay? And how do I know how close into the scalp? Well, you see this hair there? That was my guide. That's how I follow it, even though I'm at an angle. I know because the tips of my shears are right at this weight line there, and that's how I know how much hair to cut. And then I'm just going to continue, okay? And then continue going upward and outward at a 45. And then look at this stuff, this mullet stuff down here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so again, I'll just do this. And again, I'm following head shape because see the head goes in, so I'm gonna follow this. All right, and then upward and outward, okay? Now, is this the only way to do scissor or comb? Absolutely not. I mean, there are so many ways, but again, this is, I feel, just a nice general, general way that can help. Now, if you see here, I'm using the comb to guide a little bit to get those extra hairs that, you, that may be difficult to get it otherwise. So you kind of got to push them into place to get rid of those and then it creates a, a much cleaner look. She looks hot. All right, any other questions there? Are we, are we doing good? Unfortunately, I can't really see the questions. I have Danny helping me out. Okay, so now- it's Just giving shout outs from Philippines and oh, okay, wherever they're cool. watching. Philippines, I love it. Mexico. Mexico, all of you. I love this. A global gathering in my bathroom. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, so sometimes you're going to look at it. This is the thing about Suzer Racon. Step back a little bit and take a look at it. Because sometimes if you're too close, you're too into it. You've got to step away and take a look. If you feel like it's a little dark in some areas, that's fine. You want to go up and slightly clean that out, okay? So here we go, we're gonna go through here and clean that up and see, I'm just going straight upwards and then just keep going until you run out of hair. That way you know you're not going too far in. You know, you're not gonna create the around head. You're gonna keep it square, okay? Thank you for showing them around the ear. That's always been the hardest part for some people. Oh good, yes, because around the ears, let me just tell you, if I said I never cut someone's ear before, I'd be lying, okay? Because <laughs> I did it one time. I had this client, this was in my early year, I think my first year on the, on the, on the job, and I was doing scissor will come. I got my brand new shears, not these ones, but at that time it was this other one, and I was like, yeah, man, I'm ready. And then I snipped the back of his earlobe, and boy, I was shaking. And you know when it turns white, and you're like, oh, it's fine. And then three seconds later, Whoosh, all this blood. <laughs> the guy didn't even know. Anyways, enough of that. That's kind of gruesome. But so they're watching from Saudi Arabia. Oh, nice. Portland, Oregon, Tampa, Florida. Portland, I love it. Tampa. Wow, everybody's in the house. I love it. Okay, 
So generally, this is it. This is your scissor over comb um, type of thing here. And if you really want to get even more in there, I have here another shameless plug, a Wolf Bear Barber Comb. So basically what this is, this gives you a lot of flexibility. Obviously, this is good for clipper over comb or scissor. But the reason why I like something like this is if you want to do more of a fade type effect where it's shorter and then gets to longer and a regular comb is just too thick, well, look how thin that is and flexible. You can really mold this to someone's head. You see how that is? I can't, I can't get that close with my other comb. See that? So what I'll do here is I'll scoop in there and really get in there. Um, and ooh, look at that. So now this is a much cleaner, ooh, a, a much cleaner effect, almost like you used clippers, even though you didn't, so good. you know? So this allows you to really get into those areas where, you know, you normally would not be able to with a regular comb. And you see that it's much tighter, cleaner, you see? Now I can get even more detailed with around the ear and the scissor, see? Look at that. Oh yeah, see? I like that. Someone has a question here. Yes. Um, oh, look at that, much cleaner now, see? All from tool selection. Jane wants to know, do you do the nape horizontally or vertically? Section. Okay, so how do I do the nape? That's a great question. Let's go to the nape. Okay, so now it just depends how much area. Now let's go ahead and grab a little bit more nape or more back of the head. Okay, just so you guys can see. So do you do a 45 degree angle towards the face? Julie wants to know. Yeah, so get back to that. here we go. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, so let's go back to the general comb now again. So what I like to do here is it just depends on what I'm doing, I suppose, but I generally start by creating a guide at some sort of a, yes, a 45. Um, so I would say it's more diagonal back, you see? So here's the sides diagonal back, like that. Um, and then how you would cross check is just do the opposite. Go, so first I would go this way, you know? So let's say you, you know, you're getting rid of all this stuff here. Just following your guide from before. Yeah, just following the guide from before. And then, you know, you want to cross check, make sure you're all good. And normally you can see it by eye, but if not, then you go this way and double check. You know, just like that. And I think the key here also is the control of this right hand here. If you're right handed, that is, you see only moving that top blade. We don't want to be all like this, you know? That's going to be all over the place and kind of not as clean. So it's almost like you want to have an invisible glue that's like gluing this bottom uh, blade to the edge of the shear, so that, or the comb. So that way, you see, up, down, vertical, I mean, uh, you know, horizontal, vertical, 45. You want to do like this. Everybody wants your comb. They want to know where they can get oh, it. Oh, yeah. You just go to wolfbear.com, just like that, and you can get it. Wolfbear.com. Oh, that way. There, it's actually 25% uh, off now, I believe, because of this whole situation. Um, and um, also, not to get too crazy, but for all of you getting back to work, too, the Zookas, the, the next, the Cape Seals. Can this you put one on her just so they can see? Yeah, this is going to be very um, important in the future when we reopen to keep sanitary because it is barbicide approved and tested by barbicide. So it is reusable, 100% safe. Um, and I have it in the other room, but I don't want to take up too much time with that. But it's essentially you would, it's a silicone neck strip. You'll see them all over my, my Instagram. Okay. So. What else? I feel like we covered scissor over comb. What else do we got? They were saying when the hair is really bulky, do you like to use the texture scissors? Oh, yes. They can use thinning shears. Okay, if so you have a lot of bulk. Let, me, let me explain something here about texture shear. That's a good question because for all of you who may not know, I am a big fan of these. And there are some purists out there and respect to them too, but they don't like them at all, and that's fine. But for those who are interested, let me explain one thing. Not all texture shear are created equal. They are very different tools. So I would consider this just as different as this, 
just as different as a regular Shia. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Or just as different as that. By the way, where? Oh, or this. <laughs> but we'll get into that later. But um, that's a different video. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, see this cuts 20% per snip. This cuts 45% per snip. Pretty, pretty weird, huh? This has bigger teeth. This is serrated edge. This is flatter edge. And this is curved. That's not curved. They're all des designed for different things. So when it comes to scissor over comb, I would use texture shear only to slightly blend. Like you want to get the exercise of doing it as correctly as possible with regular shear. What you don't want to do is, uh, well, generally, you know, is uh, to get the best effect is you want to get a nice here. You don't want to leave a super heavy line and then try to get that line out with texture shear. You want to go ahead and try to get it out as much with these. And, you know, sometimes people's heads have dents and things like that. It's not perfect. So for those slight dark areas, then you want to go in with texture shear and maybe slightly knock out the edge a little bit, you know? But we don't want to rely on texture shear to fix anything per se, quote unquote. You just want to use it to enhance a little bit, okay? So hopefully that answers that. But uh, for me, I'm more of a fan of texture shear when I'm using hair with some length, you know, for texturizing. Uh, and we can get into that later too, if you, if you like. Um, what else? You know what I can do? I'm gonna get into point cut. I know a lot of question, people have questions on this, or they tend to just generalize point cutting as the same, the same thing. Point cutting is the same. Well, guess what? It is not. So I will go into this. Now, depending on the shape we're doing, and just for this I'll do a, a quick uh, concave shape here. So what I'm going to do is make a new line. You see how crazy that looks? So we're going to create a new mm -hmm. shape with point cutting. Philip is one of the best hair cutters you'll ever watch. Oh, thank you so much here. I just really love what I do. So check this out. What you want to do is, see I'm holding this shear here and um, and I'm just twisting my wrist inwards, okay? So if you notice, I take the shear, notice the wolf shear has it cut out here so that I can push it back closer to my knuckle. This gives me an easier way to do this, okay? So now, what I want to do is to point cut. There's a couple things. You're gonna point cut for shape, and then you're gonna point cut for texture. First, we're gonna point cut for shape. So let's go here, ready? Here. And I want to go as parallel as possible. Okay, notice I'm not like this, and I'm not taking out chunks that look like that. Okay, that's just more giant steps in the hair, you know? What we want to do is more just create a soft line is all. That's it. So you want to be about, um, you know, as even as humanly possible. Nothing's going to be perfect, but you want to sort of have, um, and look, you see these little, little soldiers here, that's totally fine. You can knock those out later. But you want to go back and forth just so you get a cleaner thing. So you see that the bottom line and the top lines are gonna be very similar. So this here is more for creating shape. See, so I have a soft shape here through point cutting. Now, I do what's called, well, I like to call the double lift. So the double lift means I'm gonna take my comb again lift it for the second time, but this time I leave more hair. Now why? Well, I already created this line. I don't want to destroy that line. I want to now go deeper point cut. And this is the part where we do, where we create texture. And this is where we want to go even more parallel with the hair. Because what we don't want to do here is go too angled and then look, whoop, now, now that, that whole thing is messed up, right? So what we want to do is be more parallel with the hair, okay? Because otherwise, it just, it's uneven, it just looks like that. And when hair falls like that, ah, sometimes it can just look a little, a little sloppy, right? So let's uh, clean this up again. Okay, you have some questions. Yes. <clears throat> um, so Barbara wanted to see the hand movement. Thank you for showing that. Um, Martine wants to see face framing when you're done with this. 
but Isa wants to know how do you prevent cutting yourself? Good question. This is how I like to prevent cutting myself and then I'll move on to face framing. There's so many ways, but with point cutting, this is what I do. Are you ready? Check this out. I'll give you an example. Okay, look at this. We have a, our hair, we have a guide and we're gonna point cut. Well, as I point cut, I'm not point cutting as I come in because that could be very dangerous. You want to keep your eye on the prize, and that prize is the bottom of the tip of the bottom blade. If you keep your eye on that, notice I'm keeping my eye here. As long as I can see that, and it's above this finger, I'll never cut myself. Also, I'm cutting as I go out. But if, if it goes in and I can't see it, you see how it's like disappeared now a little bit from this finger? Boop, now I'm going to cut myself. We don't want to do that. So we want to go here and cut on the way out. I know it looks like I'm cutting as I'm going in when I go fast, but believe me, I'm cutting on my way out. Elizabeth says, I've seen where you go behind the hair horizontally. What's the difference between that and what you're doing now when you're point cutting? Behind the hair horizontally. Maybe she means when you twist it. And you mean when I go like this? Anyway, I, I don't know, I don't understand that, but um, let me see behind the hair horizontally. Oh, you know what? I don't know if this is it, but this is another one. Let's say this, look at this. You're cutting a lot of hair off. Oh, watch this, hold on. Actually, let me just do this. Okay, let's say that you're doing a big transformation and you're cutting the hair short. So your next section is that much longer. Look at that, you see how much longer it is? Now, normally, if this hair is wet, it's gonna hang down like this over the head. So how, it's hard to point cut hair that's this much because it's too much hair. You're going to be there forever. So what I like to do is slice it first. So I'll slice first just to get the hair out of there. And I slice it like this here. See? Okay. So I slice the hair out this way. Uh, number one, I'm saving my knuckles and not cutting them off. But see, I just got rid of a lot of that hair. Now it's short enough to stick up and now I can follow and uh, follow the guy with point cutting. So now whether I do it this way or whether I do it that way, either way, I'm making sure that I watch that bottom blade. I think okay? she means when you take the hair at the nape and you twist it, like when you're doing oh. your bobs. It's a totally different look. Oh, I see. Okay, so, um, okay, so I'll, this is one last uh, attempt at understanding what that would <laughs> So that would be the twist block graduation. And that's when I would be at the back of the head like this and I would, uh, maybe there's a lot of hair here in the back. You cut a bob or a lob or something and it's just too thick because that means on the side of the head now, it's just too puffy because it's short and it's too puffy. So we want to undercut. So I take some of the hair up top, leave some here from the round of the head down, but I don't want to cut any length off, but I want to get rid of the weight. So what I do here is I'll take the hair. Well, let me at least clean this up a little bit. This haircut's really not uh, meant for this, but I'm gonna do it anyway because why not? So basically you're removing bulk from both, but it's just two totally different techniques for different yeah, types totally of hair. Yeah, different techniques. So what I'm gonna do is I For different types of haircuts, up, right? And then, you know, I twist it. Okay, and then I cut it off. Now I can cut it straight across or, or, or uh, re, you know, point cut, whatever you like. It's totally up to you. But what I'm doing here is I'm over directing this side and this side. And when then I drop this, now we have very short hair here and you've kept your length. But the beautiful thing is it's collapsed all the weight, collapsed all the weight. Now wait, hold on, let's cut a, a you know, a line. So that means this would be kind of like a lob, but now all the weight's gone, but there's no like chunky weight lines or anything. So then the top drops over and you don't see any of that. You just have less weight in the back, which is nice. People want to feel a nice. leaner look. They don't want puffy head, you know what I mean? So there's that. Okay, so now I believe someone asked for face, frame. face framing and that's what we'll do.
and everybody's asking about tools and scissors and everything so i put it in the comments but if you want to call oh yeah so like i said if you go to wolfbear.com there's a bunch of cones brushes and 25 percent off code up there for everybody okay um, but the shears will be on zen master website but like i said if you just google wolf shear it'll come up um, and you'll get that. So, so when you do the face framing, Lisa also wants to know technique for cutting her own long side swept bangs. Right. So if you want to keep that in mind while you're All right. side face swept. framing well, her. Unfortunately, this one is already, some bangs have been cut. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to pretend that they're not there. But let's just say someone comes in with some bangs and they want some face frame. Oh, you know, we did that already yesterday, so let me get another uh, mannequin. Oh, you're in luck. I've got a freshie. <laughs> and this one is Josephine. So we have a new gal in town here. All right. When do you wet cut? When you wet cut, do you use different scissors? I do not, because when I designed these wolf shears right here, I wanted it to be what's called an all-arounder. Wet cut, dry cut, men's cut, women's cut, long hair, short hair, texturizing, blunt cut. As close to an all-arounder as you can get. Obviously, there's specialty shears out there, but let's face it. Most of us, we're busy. We just want a good, nice one pair that we can always go to. And then we start to do our specialty ones after that. So that's why I designed these the way they are. So therefore, yes, you can use them on wet or dry. There you go. All right, so getting into the face framing, Luis says, when I do face framing and part it on one side mm -hmm. that, uh, and layer it on one side, it seems to be more layered on one side than the other. Yes, that's a great question. And you know what? Just for you, I'm going to do this on the side. How about that? Does that sound good? Tiffany. Well, I blow dried it in the middle, so let's hope it, it goes to the side a little bit. All right. Also, I like to do, when it comes to side parting, I call it the oblique parting, which means you're gonna start it on the side, but then it kinda, of, the part ends up in the middle somewhere. Even if they do it straight like that, this is just for balance purposes. If they're gonna end up combing it over, you know, it's fine. But for the face part, here we go. Do you typically cut the face framing wet or dry? Um, you know what, I do both. It just depends on, I do it a lot dry when they have extensions or it's super, super long. But if it's shorter, I can do wet hair. Honestly, I do both. It just, honestly, it depends on timing and the situation at hand. Okay, let me look at this though. Okay, so here we go. Wow, this is gonna be a good one, guys. I know, it's so exciting. Because this is, well anyways, I, I blow dried it to go the other way, but it's fine. So hopefully you can get the, the idea. Now they asked, someone asked, when they part on the side, why is it that it looks more layered on one side than the other? This is where you have to eyeball certain things. So for example, if they're going to wear their hair on the side like this, you want to make sure where each part goes. Don't go on the technical aspect and try to meet in, in, like, like you would in the center. Because then what's going to happen is this side is always going to be shorter and the, the, the less parted side is going to look longer. So it's going to look like there's tons of layers here and it's going to look long on that side. Okay. So what you want to do is literally cut it balanced on each side. Now how do I do that? Well, let's start off with the less side first. Okay. Here we go. What I like to do here is slightly, there you go, turn it a little bit. Now, this is on dry hair. So on dry hair, you want to do what's called a carving technique. So carving, so there's a difference. This is snipping. This is chopping. Carving is where I change finger position and I, look at this, my thumb's barely in there. It's almost not even in there. I'm using this finger as a guide to push down a little and then I'm carving out. I'm opening the shears wider. I'm not cutting with the tips of the shears. This is different. If I'm doing this, that's snipping and cut. If I'm carving, I'm using the inside of the blade close to the screw. So you want to carve out. And why do you do this? This creates a strong line, but a soft line because we're slightly pushing. Okay? So here we go. 
What you want to do here is natural fall. Okay, so comb it. This is how it would naturally fall because elevation distribution, right? Elevation will be just about 10 degrees off the face. Not a lot. We don't want to be way up here, okay? Uh, not that you can't do that, but for this, we're not going to do it. And then the distribution is natural fall. We're not going to over-direct fall. We're not going to over-direct back. Just naturally where it sits, okay? And just a little off the face. And just for purposes, we're going to go, let's do the chin, right? Around the chin. Okay, so here we go. And notice I'm behind the client. So now I'm going to look here and I'm going to look downward. And here we go. I'm going to slightly carve. Okay, ready? And it's like you're working your way down slowly. Look, I'm doing it slow. Slow so you can see. The result. Rob said almost like a razor? Almost. You know, but razors is um, more up and down motion. This is just more slight carving. You see, this is very... There we go. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Look at but you want to look. See, get up close there. You see this is a very clean line. And then when you drop it, we have a nice... Clean line there. Eric, Woo! Eric Vaughn in the host. Whoa, that was a good one. Okay, so here we go. See that? So now, how do we match the other side? So what you don't want to do. Eric Vaughn said, "Sexy AF." Eric, what's up, buddy? So what you don't want to do is grab this hair and now match it to there. What we want to do is actually comb it um, perpendicular to the parting. So this is the part. So we're gonna. Here's the parting. Remember, it's at an angle, oblique to the middle. We're going to perpendicularly cut it so it's perfectly, uh, you know, 90 degrees from that. And then, again, same thing, uh, 10 degrees off the face, natural fall. But we're going to have to break this up in a few. Tilt it a little that way. Do you change it? Or? Yeah, yeah, just straight. So what you want to do is make sure if your hand's big enough to carry the whole thing, cool. If not, just break it in half. So let's just break it in half anyway, but. So from here, I can see where that line is. See, but if I match it here and go over, it's gonna be shorter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we have some length. So there's the shortest piece right at the chin. So let's comb this over here. Remember, perpendicular to the parting. And then, same thing. So the tension stays on top of what you're cutting? Is what yes, tension to... stays on top. Let the uh, hair fall. And then, here we go. Same movement. I'm just slowly carving out. See, we're not chopping anything. We're not uh, doing anything of that nature. And I'm following down, pointing the shears down to the length. So here we go. You see that? Nice and clean. All right. Then now we have the rest of this hair. So let's let's do it now, let's grab it. But see, this is a round surface, so I'm gonna follow around, all right? So here we go, and let's continue, because here's my length, here's the, the guide, let's follow it down, point the scissors down to the guide, and start carving. Here we go, boom, slowly but surely. No need to rush, you know? Woo! It's getting there, folks. It is getting there. Now look, we have this little hook left. Okay, let's not leave that there. Let's make sure we get that gone. Now here's the key. Make sure you don't cut it all off because now you've lost your corner and don't do it too shallow because then your corner is going to be too blocked off. So now, finish it off just like... Boop, boop. See that? <laughs> All right, there we go. And then, there we have it. So now you can actually go up, and if you left any soldiers out, just go ahead and cut them freehand. Why not, you know? Who says you can't do that? Not me. You've got some questions. Sure. <sighs> well, everyone loves it. It's perfection, it's awesome, it's so satisfying. Hearts, great control. Um, like slithering, as Tiffany said. Um, 
people are wondering what your thoughts are on the mat on clients having to wear masks and if the mask will be in the way of doing these types of techniques well if you have the mask that goes behind the ear you'll be fine just not the ones that go behind the head you know those ones that's going to be a mess you can't do that so if you are worried I would try to get my hands on some of those that go behind the ear, and that way it shouldn't mess up anything, really. You know, that's my, uh, that's my answer to that. And Isa wants to know, do you suggest to start on your weaker cutting side? Okay, this is what I said. We all have a good side, and then we have a great side, mm. okay? You like that? I like that. Um, so, yes, start on your good side. Um, you know, it, the more you do it, the better you're going to get, right? Uh, but yes, if you do have a weaker side, definitely get stronger by doing it. Now, let me just tell you, forward graduation was my weakest technique when I first started. I, my boss at that time, I mean, he would throw his combs and smack the, I mean, he was so mad. I just couldn't get it. I didn't understand it. And then, anyway, one day, something made sense to me. Matter of fact, my buddy, my buddy, this was a different guy, but then another guy showed me, uh, Tony. Oh man, shout out to you, Tony. But he, he said something that just made sense to me, and that was that. And then through the years, I just kind of changed it up and did, did my own thing, but, but that's what started me about the point A and point B and all that sort of thing. So, look, there's no right or wrong, folks. It's just what ends up working for you. But this is what's worked for me. You can always adjust this. You can always start elevating and changing direction. But on a basic note, I feel like this is an easy general way to do it. And then you take it to the next level. <laughs> so Tiffany wanted to see curtain bangs, but Megan has a really cool question. She yeah. says, how would you tweak this technique for the guest that wants a more shattered, textured look? Yes, perfect. So. This gives you the, the classic clean look, right? So now what you can do, even with shattered looks, you want to make sure you have a general uh, shape because if it's too shattered, it looks like a mess, right? So instead of, uh, okay, so make a general uh, shape here and I would say leave it actually a little longer than you want. Then what you can do, break it down into the same, uh, you know, to the same uh, direction we did, but this time we're gonna take the comb on top and we're gonna flip it over here, all right? So from here, you can, and this is with regular shears too. You're gonna take this and you see how the hair starts to curve and go down? So you wanna make sure your, your shears are parallel to that. You don't wanna go opposite, we're gonna cut it all off. So from here, you then uh, start to uh, slice outwards Okay, this will help create deep V's or deep, um, you know, sections. And you can even come over top and cut sections out like so. Very parallel though, right? You know, very parallel, yes. Because that way you're gonna create more um, separation and, and shatteredness, right? And same with the other side. You would just go here. All right, you see how that's clean? Well, we would just sort of break it up because see, see this strong line. I'm going to keep generally that line, but let's go ahead and break that up a little bit. And you would just move your left hand to accommodate the cutting hand. So you see how it's more broken up now. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you would do that. And look, I only did it once, but you could do it twice, three, four, until you're happy with however much texture you've made. And then the rest of that comes in the internal layering up in here. So then you would go in and, you know, really, you know, really go for it up in the interior. So they really want to see curtain bangs. Curtain bangs, got it. All right, so, so with curtain bangs, that to me is a level three. And what do I mean by that? Really quickly, Lisa wants to know if you can show the position of your hands and body again when you're cutting the fringe on the heavier side, since you're probably gonna cut it off. Oh. Is that possible? Uh, when, when face framing it? Yeah. Okay, so the heavy side is on the, this side. So what I'm doing is- Because people are asking how come you're standing behind here and then when you do this side, you're not standing behind. Oh, 
Well, number one, I'm right-handed, and so right-handed, it's a lot easy to come from behind on the left side because boom. But I can't really do it this way like that. So I just turn to the front. And also, I've made my guide. I have something to follow. When I'm doing this side, I'm looking at the mirror, and I'm looking to see what I'm doing here. But I don't need a mirror if I already have my guide to follow from here. So then when I'm here, instead of... I'm essentially doing the same thing. It's just now her head's on the other side of me, you know? And I'm still carving down the same way. See, look. It's the same. I'm just in a different... Because I'm right... If I was left-handed, then I would do this side first, and then I would come to this side and do this. You have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, Annalise wants to know if you accidentally take a giant chunk out of that blending or when you were point cutting, is there a way to correct it and blend it? And actually, um, Aisha wanted to see that flip move one more time, if you could. Yes, flip move one more time. And that here, let's, and actually I can do the flip move this time with that. So let's start with the heavy side, because that's what we do. So we're gonna break it down into a few. So let's start with the first one. Do you the lighting they can see better? And so what you wanna do is comb on top, so look, you just grab it, but look, notice I'm directing the hair perpendicular to the parting, okay? See? I'm not doing it here, I'm doing it here. And then comb on top, and you're just going to twist it. Ooh. So now I grab the hair. So it's all about control, huh? Control. And you see now this is what it should look like from your view. Then from here, use the ridge of your fingers to rest the bottom blade. And now you will, you know. And now you're using texture shear? Texture shear. I mean, you can use anything you want, but I'm using texture. And then you do what's called progressive. So I start here, but look, I start letting go the hair as I go until I run out of hair. And then when I let go, then you have this. So one more time on normal speed, it would be like this. And then. And that's that. Love the twist, wow. See, so when cutting a shape, I like to be natural fall, but when it comes to texturizing and manipulating the shape, that's when I mess around with elevation and distribution. And Sydney so. was wondering, is it a totally different technique if they have curly hair? No, 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 no. If you have curly hair, uh, there's many ways to go about it, though. It, with curly hair, it depends how they wear it. If they're a curly-haired person who wears it both ways, you definitely want to follow this similar thing. But if they only wear it curly, then you can go in a different way. Also, with texturizing, it's going to be different with curly hair, too, and I'll show you why. And that would be the same if they do wherever they do their part, right? If they're being yes, on the other same side. With the part. Or... But with curly hair, you definitely don't want to be texturizing like this with, with texture shears. You actually want to do this move right here. You want to do brick cutting. Oh my gosh. You want to do brick cutting, okay? okay. So Get I'll show you this. So brick cutting is going to be more like this. I mean, excuse me. So, oh, hold on. Let's cut a shape in here real quick. Let's cut a blunt. Okay. So let's say... You do have a lot of questions about layers as well. So let's say, we, you know, point cutting on straight here. We all know that. Slicing. Okay, fine. Texture shear. But when it comes to creating more internal texture, like let's just say with curly hair, we love volume, right? So maybe we want to see some volume at the top. So from here you would do this here. And I feel we're all fairly familiar with brick cutting. And brick cutting essentially just means you're not gonna be parallel, you're gonna be perpendicular to the hair, and you're gonna cut out little notches, very small notches or big notches, depending on how much you can come from the back here. Okay? Because this creates very separated uh, pieces, okay? Or if you want bigger notches, you do bigger notches because this helps keep the curls separated. Now, 
Progressive brick cutting is another fun one that I like to do, so let's just pretend we have a new shape again. And this time, I would be from the side, obviously. And what you want to do here is, now I want to progressively brick cut on the inside of the hair, because this is going to help you know, support that longer hair and get that volume. So let's start about halfway. So now I've twisted the hair, or excuse me, I've bent the hair under the comb. So I can actually see what I'm doing. If I just do that, it's hard to see. So I do this. And you see this look? I eventually just gradually keep coming up as I brick cut. That's progressive cutting. So, you know, progressive, meaning you start from one and keep going. So here we go. Instead of point cutting, I'm gonna turn perpendicular and cut out notches here, okay? And then I just eventually keep, uh, keep moving up. You know? Nice trick. Education gold, Roxy. See, said. look at this. Boom, 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 boom. And then normally I concentrate on the middle third because this is more about creating internal volume rather than texturizing the ends. We don't really, we're not worried about that when it comes to curly hair. So boom, because as you know, the ends of curly hair can end up looking like a Brillo pad if they're too separated. So that is one move that I absolutely love with curly hair. Oh, let's get into that swoop bang or whatever. Kurt and bangs. Kurt okay. and bangs. So let me show you here. Let's just say we're on the same uh, part here. So one, two, three. Okay. Well, let's do this here. So I'll do a swoop and then we can get into the actual quote unquote curtains, right? All right. And let me do People this wanted to know if you could use a razor with that technique. Oh, oh yes, you can use razor. Well, which what te which one? The block cutting, I think. Um, well, okay. I'm sure you could. I've never done it, but I'm not saying you can't do it. Okay, so here we go. Normally, with a side parted swoop bang, I like to go. I mean, I know a super hard part can mm -hmm. be done, but normally I'm a natural fall type of guy, so. I like to be somewhat around, no farther than the high arch of the eyebrow, okay? But again, if you want to go farther, that, that's fine. I mean, there's, there's no rules, okay? All right, so now this is where cutting it wet is actually a good thing. So, because you need more control. So I'm gonna lightly wet it down with this beautiful water bottle here. See that? Okay. Okay. Here we go. If you want to create, this is where creating direction is where, what it's all about. You definitely want to create direction. And how do we do that? Elevation and distribution. That's what's up. Okay. And execution. So look at this. It's straight down. But what we want it to do is swing over. So how do we do that? We're going to start here at the point. And we're going to create a guide. So what we're going to do is go to that side. So here, we're going to start with one. Actually, let's start off with the length a little bit here. So I'm going to start like this. Let's start here. What I like to do is I like to swing it over and see where that lies. So I say maybe around the cheekbone would be a nice length, right? Mm -hmm. So you swing where that would be and that would be about there. So let's cut it about right here, okay? They're loving these techniques. Really appreciate you teaching oh, us this Absolutely. new stuff. Absolutely. So now let's point cut this, or you know, we can even just cut it straight, why not? I mean, but you can point cut it too. So here... Got 600 people watching. If you comb it over, you have this, all right? Now, uh, this is what we're gonna do, create our first one. So we create the first guide here. And what we're going to do is, this is where elevation distribution comes in. We're going to elevate it, you know, about 90 from the head, okay? Maybe a little, maybe 80, okay? And then, look at this. Watch this. This here is your length, the bottom, and this here is your weight, okay? So just remember that because we're going to layer this. So let's go ahead and we're going to, uh, distribution is going to be the part. So we're gonna over direct to the parting at 90 degrees or 80. 
all right? So look at this. You see that? That's the weight. Let's not even get fancy. Let's just cut it straight up blunt, okay? Because we can always texture later, but let's just, for basics, let's show you. See this, look at this. So here it is, and now when we drop it, we have some movement. Look at this, it's already going that way. Wow. Because why? Because we swung, we over-directed it over. Now, we're gonna pie shape this, and we're gonna take another, another section. Look at that. And now, we're gonna over-direct that to the previous, which means to this guy. And same thing, elevate it up off the head, Check that guide, and there it is. And here we go. We cut it, and then we drop it, and look at that, ooh. Okay, and then take the last one, same thing. And now we're gonna, well forget that, we're gonna over direct it to that previous, which was this second one. Now you can play around with this. If you want to over direct it to the very first one, do it that way. It just all depends on what you're looking for, but I'm keeping this as simple Aww. as possible. Misty says, I've been doing swoop, bang, wrong, swoop bangs wrong forever, 27 years, and she is totally loving this new technique. Really? All good. Well, let me, let me correct you there. I would not say they're wrong, okay? It's just your way. And that's the thing. There is no right or wrong, in my opinion. There's just some ways that are a little bit more effective, that's all, in the situation. So look at this. I have not texturized, I have not done anything, but it automatically swoops over. Everybody's loving Pretty cool, it. huh? So now, let's just quickly dry these because this is where the fun comes in. So let's dry it real quick. They say, you make me want to be a stylist, enjoy watching, I can appreciate that. You're an excellent educator. Wow, that was an impressive technique, instant visible movement. Oh, I love that. Loving this. Nice. This is why you're fab. <laughs> I love his kit. <laughs> uh, someone did say I always have extra weight on that last one corner area. Do you ever find that you have a little extra weight on that last corner or? Um, no. Well, I think you would have extra weight if you over directed too much on that last piece. So if you over directed too much, you're going to, because remember, this is a round surface. This, mm. is, this is sort of the difficult thing to think is that we think on flat planes. We tend to anyways, and that's just the human mind. But we always have to remember more than likely we're dealing with a round shape. So a round plane. So anyhow, this is it here. So now we obviously know this is very thick, right? We need to soften this up a little bit. It's a little too, too weighty. So that's when we go to the old trusty texture shear here. And I'm gonna use my 20 percenters. Now let's remember, let's remember what that looks like because I'm about to lean this out major. So let's take it up. And I'm gonna take the whole thing just cause I can hold the whole thing. But if you can't, you can always subsection again. Oh, Liz wants to know where's Alfredo. <laughs> oh, Alfie, he's in he's in New York, cause you know he's a New Yorker now. We miss him though. Okay, so you're gonna bring up the whole thing right at that first mark, and then again, I'm going to do progressive texturizing. So here, go all the way across, and actually, even though it looks like I'm cutting straight, I'm actually cutting at an angle. It's just fast. Okay, and. I'm gonna progressively move out till there's none left. Now, that's once, but I already know I'm gonna do it twice, maybe even three times. Each time I do it, I can feel that there's less hair, you see? And what you wanna do is watch it. You wanna watch this. See, look how much leaner it looks. Now, also, that's thicker there. Let's target that right now while we're at it. And then, let's move over a little bit, and then, Boom, now it's much, much leaner than it was, okay? And again, this is more wearable, and it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things where even if she's, you know, it's gonna look nice and good the next day still. But see, lean, lean is where it's at with the haircuts nowadays, I would say. And look, even if you wanted a freehand and just get in there with the texture sears a little and, 
You know, look, we also know this is an art form, okay? As long as we have a general idea of what we're doing, go ahead and, and do a few things that seem right in the moment, you know? Don't be afraid anyways. Uh, um, someone wants to know what's the purpose of the progression? The purpose of the progression is if I do this and I only go, that's not going to do anything. Hmm. You know, I mean, that's, it's barely anything. Texturizing is something that you want it to count. You need it to work. So um, even if you look at hair, like for example, if you look at hair that hasn't been cut in a while and you say, wow, your hair looks good. And they go, well, really? Because I haven't had it cut in a long time. It's because it's grown out in different lengths and it's just the way it falls, it's very soft and it looks great. Well, you want to mimic that, okay? You want to mimic almost the randomness. So what I'm doing is I created a strong outside line, meaning this line is strong, but on the inside, I almost want it to be filtered out and more random. So you have lengths here, you have lengths there, you have lengths there, and that just tends to lay just very nicely, you know? Love it. Hopefully that explains that. It just One looks more natural. One of the best natural. tutorials they've ever watched. Oh, awesome. This mannequin is getting the side sweat bangs I've always dreamed of, <laughs> Misty says. That's awesome. <laughs> Hashtag inspired. See, there you go, folks. And also, what about curtain bangs worn with a center part? Right, so curtain bangs with the center part, you want to do almost this exact same thing, except for... Well, They're look, loving the explanation, by the way. There's, there's many, many ways, right? But let's go ahead and start this way. So you would do this same thing on this side, obviously, okay? And I know we're running out of time here, but I'll make this as quick as possible, and then that'll be that. But what a lot of the times a lot of people like to do is add a little bit of a short piece in the middle first, mm -hmm. right? So you would just take this center piece. You can twist it or leave it as such. And what's actually fun is you can actually take a razor and there it is. Now, here's the key. Let's not go like that, all right? Because then you're going to have bangs that short. Let's Microphone. pull it down and make sure, you know, it's about at the bridge of the nose or, or right where the eyebrows hit, okay? And remember, check the, uh, the cowlicks or anything that might be happening there. But what we do here is then we slightly, and like I said, wet is, is, is best, but you know, I don't want to re-wet it and re-dry it. And so here, okay, make sure we get a good, um, you know, and also look, this, this blade is a little dull, but you can see it's created a soft uh, line here, you see? So mm -hmm. here, so this would be our beginning length here, right? You see that? It's nice and soft there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of sexy long. And then that's what we're looking for. So now from here, you would use that as a guide to create the curtain. Mm. So from there, let me grab regular shear. So from there, you can grab this up. Okay. And do the flip move. And now again, carving move. I'm going to carve this out. See how I'm carving? Carving slightly pushes. Slightly pushing is a good thing when it comes to this. Okay, so now look. All right, so now we've created somewhat of that curtain there, right? And then same thing would be on the other side, although you would probably want to so have good. this wet or whatever, but on this side, again, see, I'm coming from the back this time. And then here, you carve that out. And again, carving. So make sure you use the inside of the blades And look, th there's many ways. You know who's also great at these uh, curtain bangs too? Is my buddy, Joel, Joel Torres. If you don't know him, you should definitely check him out. He's incredible. That's my buddy. <laughs> Anyhow, so from here, obviously these were blow dried that way. So you would just blow dry them. And uh, then you go through and you can take center vertical sections and just dig in there very vertically for some separation so that it's not too blunt, you see? So you're breaking it up, okay? And just follow all the way through. Mm. 
And so you're happy with how much it's broken up, right? Anyhow, forget about that one because you know we didn't blow dry that, but just so you can see where, you see that you can knock out this little, sometimes you wanna leave it disconnect a little, sometimes not, it's up to you. But then, you know, depending how much bend do you wanna have it? Do you wanna give it a real 70s feel or do you wanna have it more of a modern slight flick? That's all personal preference. Okay, well, that about wraps it up for today. Do you wanna just talk really quickly one last time about your shares or your products? Because everybody still has a lot of oh, questions. Oh, really? Sure. You know what, I'll actually, I'll take maybe a couple questions too. So one last time, um, for the Zookas, if you're worried about sanitation and all that, barbicide certified. Can you, you put one on there so they can see what it looks I don't like? Have one more. Okay. You go to thezooka.com, that's Z U K A. And if you use code WOLF30, that's W O L F F, that's 30% off. That's amazing. So that way you have one for each and every client. Um, and then, like I said, clean it with barbicide, reusable, good to go for the next day. And then Wolf Shears is. Uh, Comes in six, six and a half, and seven. Okay, and again, that was with Zen Master shears. You just Google Wolf Shear, and that will pop up. And uh, yes, global shipping on those as well. And I believe they're two hundred off right now, or something like that. Um, but yes, any other questions before I go? This was fun. I like everybody this. loves it. This is the best education. A lot of first-time viewers for you, and they really love your techniques. Oh, good. Well, if you um, want to see more, I have tons of videos on my Instagram, which is at Philip Wolf Hair. That's Philip with one L, Wolf with two Fs. I don't really know how to spell hair. Okay. Um, any other questions? Everyone just wants to know where they can find more of your work and yeah, stay more so connected that's to where you. you find the majority of my work is Instagram. Um, you know, I have Twitters and all that, but I never tweet. What am I tweeting about? But yes, Instagram is where I spend most of my time, and I will be doing uh, YouTube a little bit a little bit later as well.